hi everyone welcome to this video production this video production will bless you greatly as you watch and pray along prepare to receive prophetic declarations by apostle joshua selman feel free to like share comment and also subscribe thank you so much for joining us and god bless you welcome to start now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in god's presence the bible says in psalm 119 verses 130 the entrance of thy word be that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. That will start compelling people to start coming. There came unto him his brethren and all his sisters. And they that had been of his acquaintance before. They were the ones that made him prosper before. That means how did poverty come to his life? Something was taken away from him. And everybody left physically. How did God restore it? Something came. I'm, I'm showing you because something is about to come on you now. Please read it. Are you ready? One to read. Then came there unto him all his brethren. Uh -huh, and all his sisters. And they that had been of his acquaintance before. And did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him. And comforted him. Over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Now, here's the secret. Read. And every man. How many men? There is something that comes on you that makes every man bless you. Not just those who do business with you. Every man. Every man. Read on, please. One to go. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. And I tell you this, some of you have gone through serious financial hardship. God organized this miracle service to bring financial healing, to bring financial deliverance. And I'm showing you how it happened. Because we are going to pray now. I've taught you the ministry of destiny helpers. These are men anointed, commissioned by God to pay attention to your destiny. Not everyone is a destroyer. There are people who can enter your life like they entered the life of that my gentleman and turn his life around. Who would have told him that a year before or two years before, there were people in that football field before he came. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. Every man gave him a piece of money. Every man gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold father who have you anointed in this season to hold my hands and move me to the next financial level i declare place the grace upon my life that will bring them to my destiny open your mouth and pray place that grace this is a miracle service make sure you are praying Place that grace upon my life, oh God, that will compel the helpers of my destiny to attend to me. Place that grace upon my life. Forget about where you have been. Pray. pray I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word my story is about to change you are the lifter of men the lifter of men Lord I will hold on to the storm I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men.
Hear me, believers, in the name of Jesus. Please listen to me. I submit to you by God that there are more than enough people in any city to be used by God to lift you. Nobody will come and lift you on their own. I've told you this. There is the power that rests upon your head. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Please place your hand on your head. Just place your hand on your head. Father, this is a miracle service where you are sorting people financially once and for all. My God and my King, upon every head, right here, inside, all the overflows outside i am praying lord the grace that must rest upon them that will compel the helpers of destiny to gravitate towards them in the name of jesus may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please put down your hands. Who is Christy? I'm hearing the name Christy. My assignment tonight is to deal with the issues. Christy. Who is that? Where are you coming from? I want to pray for you. I presume there may be many Christies. But your life is about to change. And in case I'm prophesying to people, you open your heart and receive. What God says to one, he says to all. Are we together? I don't mean to embarrass you, but please hear me. There's a prophetic word. I won't ask the person to come out for social reasons. There is a lady here. A man kept you in a house. Hold on now. Let me finish the prophecy. You don't know what I'm about to say. Just hold on. Let's be patient and let prophecy finish before so that you don't answer yes to something that a man kept you in a house. Listen to me. That man is married with his wife, but he kept you in a house somewhere. You are in, in a relationship with the man and he kept you in a house somewhere. I want you to know that that man is going to destroy you. He has lied to you and made you believe that if he does not help you, where will you get help? I'm advising you in this miracle service in the name of Jesus and with every sense of responsibility. I know it is not easy. It's easy to tell people you are working in this and that. You must be ready to help people when you want them to make that decision. But let me tell you, whoever that person is, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. I want you to pack out of that place because with what I'm seeing, that man did not just keep you there. There is something occultic that he's doing there. You hear what I'm saying? I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. Back out of there, he may be giving you 10 naira, but he's taking the glory of what 2 million from you. And we have to be careful as believers. Sometimes, you know why it is important to empower believers like this? Because if we don't empower believers, when people are desperate, they will do anything for money. They will come to church and remove the 10% and drop it. But they know where they got it from. So it's not enough to just criticize people and say you are this, you are following men, you are following women, you are following whatever. No, 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 no. We have to empower people first. Then we tell them this is how it is done in the kingdom. There are many parents today who are enjoying a lot of financial blessings from their children and dancing and they do not know the dirty and demonic things their children are doing to bring money. And it's easy to insult them like we always like doing in church. When we hear of people's situations, we are not rational to sit down and think and approach it from a heart of love. God brought you people out here by his spirit. I want to pray for you. Madam, your suffering has come to an end this night. Please leave her. Careful, careful so you don't injure her. I know what I just saw. I want to pray for her. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You see, let me tell you something, my dear people. 
for as long as God brought you here this night, I assure you by God that the power that will stop you from receiving your testimony is not in existence. I'm looking at this woman in a vision and I'm seeing a woman suffering bad luck anybody that says he will bless this woman something must happen to them and they will neglect them if there is anybody like that people keep making promises tomorrow they will say next week they will say whatever is stopping them from reaching out to you i cause it to his root in the name of jesus i cause it to his root in the name of jesus hallelujah Please don't, 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 I, I don't want you to feel offended. The, may God bless you, madam. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a woman, you are a widow. Oh dear, this woman has suffered. Oh. This woman, you are a widow and if I don't pray for you, it's nothing at all is coming from anyone. It's as if you don't have children. It's as if nothing is happening. You are, you are quite an aged woman. I don't know who that person is. The Lord is asking me to call that person and let me pray for that person. You are a woman, an elderly woman. You are a widow, but honestly, as it is sincerely, that you love God sincerely, but absolutely nothing is happening. This woman I'm seeing, I know you came out, but I'm seeing this woman at the overflow outside. The overflow outside. The overflow outside. I'm not just praying for every widow. Of course, I will pray for you if you come out. But the particular person I want to pray for, you are outside. Father, you are the God that can open every door. There is no mystery as to how finances come. It is not magic. It will always happen through men. The Bible says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give shall men give the lord called that name christy and i want to pray for you for some of you you are standing as altars over your family because god wants to wipe the tears of your family in the name of jesus christ the power of god will come on you right now and believe me the only thing that will bring you upstage here after this prayer is your testimony therefore i stretch my hands right now every embargo up over your finances an anointing is coming on you right now release them now in the name of jesus christ release them now in the name of jesus christ release them now in the name of jesus christ release them now in the name of jesus, name of jesus. Name of jesus. i open this door in the spirit and i declare walk into your high places in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family here. You are owing medical bills. You are owing, as I'm speaking now, you are owing medical bills even to the millions. You are owing medical bills. I don't know who that person is, whether you are watching online or you are here. It's like there's somebody. Let me tell you this. I'm going to pray for the sick shortly. Do you know that many manifestations of sickness is actually an attack on your finances? It's not about the sickness. Because there is a relationship between your health and your wealth. The sicker you are, the more your finances will tell to. So when Satan wants to attack your finances, one of the ways he does is to plant a mysterious sickness. It will not go up. It will not go down. It will remain there and keep eating finances. If there is anything I know that can destroy finances overnight, is held no matter how wealthy you think you are pray that you are not plagued or somebody around you plagued there are people who spend as much as a million naira every week to be alive if you have saved even if it's hundred million in how long we would have depleted everything people have had to sell their houses because of finances people have had to sell everything they spent their life building Hear me. God is able to lift you from that yoke. I will be praying for, we are not going to take testimonies. Our time is gone. 
we may not take testimonies of people to pray tonight i want to deal because we've not even gotten to greatness i must spend the next 15 minutes and flood this thing out it must step over your life honor and greatness we are dealing with finances the the, the wooden that came now let me tell you this do you know any day you see any widow or someone who is genuinely bereaved and incapacitated even if it is 10 naira you can give them it is a blessing unto god you see that remember the widow at name she had lost all the men in her life her husband a symbol of her strength and defense had gone and now her child who represented her future was also gone when jesus saw her condition he said no we can't leave you this way and he brought up the child nobody prays to lose anyone but if and when it happens it is important to stand with them and stand by them to pray god is able to help we can't promise you that every day everybody will be giving you money but we can promise you that something can be placed upon your life that will insist and ensure that you are not left without help let me pray for you in the name of jesus christ my dear look at me you're a widow you are standing for who your mom where is she don't cry jesus is able to help you you see let me tell you this you can't comfort people who mourn when your hand is empty i hope you know that because after you pray for them and do whatever you do some of them will stand and they're expecting that even if it's 10 naira you put something in their pocket and it's easy for us to make a lot of noise in church and talk and say this and that and that god will do it you must reject poverty in your life there's no reason why you should remain the way you are not after this miracle service father i pray for these ones you are the only one who knows how it feels so oh god but in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, you call them out to change their lives. And I pray right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn their lives around. Release that grace upon them. Your physical husbands may have gone, but may God become that husband for you. And ensure that your needs are supplied to the latter in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the hand of God rests upon your life I don't know but I just feel in my heart to say this and I say it respectfully anyone here who is a widow or who has lost a loved one and there are people who are troubling you in the name of Jesus Christ we agree right now may the troublers of your destiny go now now you see anybody who troubles a woman who does not have strength on her own under normal circumstances must be a wicked person don't cry in the name of jesus i'm praying again anyone who is troubling you maybe something you labored with your husband to get and now just because he's gone people are bullying you and bringing all kinds of trouble i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic i decree and declare may your troublers depart from you right now in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead I use this once in front to pray for every other person and I decree in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God that anyone who is troubling any widow here I will not let her have peace except otherwise but I pray that if the fault is not from them may God show them mercy immediately in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. You come to the house of God today, you come after one month. Or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your areas are paid. Only to come and testify. 
have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is he still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I love I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, Apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around. Colleague mentality. Some of you are in secondary school. Or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school. Thank God for what God is doing with them. And all of a sudden, this pompous, arrogant attitude. You see everybody and what is there. You see vision, I see vision. You pray for the sick, I pray for the sick. It's why we never receive. We keep making mistakes that are avoidable. Mistakes. Now let me tell you. Mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing. Because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored. But they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing. And they taught them rubbish. They taught them pride. They taught them a pompous life. They taught them a theology of imbalance. It matters who you listen to. It matters who you open up your spirit to. But that spirit must be open. Brothers and sisters, our generation is at stake. In the next 10 or 20 years, many of the people we look at today will be gone. Is, is the truth. Do you believe that? Many of our fathers, they are already wrapping up. We insulted them. We said, ah! They came and they taught people, cover your head, don't cover your head. We insulted them. They taught people, die, 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 die. We insulted them. Now the button is being passed to us. Let's hear what our children will say about us. We insulted them. We refused to see what God was doing to them. And as young as we are, we kept running our mouth insulting them. They preserved the button. Some of them today, look at great men like Papa Ilya Demoya. People like Billy Graham still alive. These men serve God to the end. Let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency. That's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? I can't remember it. Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will be nothing. The chip and the duplex, only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time am i against prosperity no but if that's all you can give a generation if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in mary clay Turning sinners into saints, and I will always sing your praise.
Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray. Who stand on the gap on behalf of a land. Who stand in the gap on behalf of a land. Now on our knees, we'll take our death and pray for the sea for our land. Second part, he says, the power of darkness release our land. We'll never prevail. We'll never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion. Those who will rise up and pray. And in the gap on behalf of a land, we stand in the gap on behalf of a land. Down on our knees, we take our stand and pray for the seed of our land. We'll pray for the need of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria will cause you, lift your voice and pray. We cause you from region to region. The powers that keep men poor, the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land, the powers that stop development, the powers. That stop advancement. The power that destroy men of God. The power that destroy churches. The power that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus. We come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ grows. Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone. But can we pray for Nigeria? We Listen. As God looks at the map, He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the Spirit. Let God not see different localities. Some villagers. And God will see an uneducated woman intercessor. And check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the world. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east. Peace in the north. 
signify the border of this territory. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. We manifest our priesthood. We are not stand. We are not stand. Priests of the God. We raise an incense of intercession over this nation.
We love the Yoruba man, the Hausa man. We love the South South man. We cut the spirit of hatred. We cut the spirit of hatred. We cut the spirit of hatred by this prophetic act. God is not just a God of Christians. He's the God of everyone. We are praying for everybody in Zaria around. Let the Muslims prosper. Let Igbo people prosper. Let Yoruba prosper. Don't antagonize anybody. Lift your voice and say, Father, because of our presence, Nigeria must prosper. Lift your voice and pray. Take away any tribal sentiments. All we want is to see Jesus glorified in our nation. Jesus glorified in every home. Jesus glorified in every geopolitical zone. and another we banish them from this nation in the name of Jesus as your priests we lift up our voice from this side of your kingdom and we declare that as far as this territory is concerned we remain one I decree and declare by this apostolic grace and under this platform the church in Zaria remains one there is no Igbo church. There is no Yoruba church. There is no Hausa church. There is only the church, the Ecclesia, God's own place. In the name of Jesus. There will be no hatred and no violence within this border. Father, we commit our people here representing this nation prophetically. Let there be the spirit of love and unity. Every plan and purpose that is not of God to cause trouble, to kill people, to maim people, to destroy lives and properties, we banish it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. We ask for grace that our priesthood will be the reason why every territory we find ourselves will love you and live for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father. Rescue the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Sing it one more time with 
and gentlemen this is not a song if this enters you as a revelation something will happen to your life you know i was watching a video some days ago and i was watching a.a a. allen is it was a very old video and i watched this man they brought a man on a wheelchair deaf no no he was not deaf but he was dumb he could not speak and he was grounded on the wheelchair and a. a. Allen was just preaching and was sharing the secrets to the power of God in his own life and all the things that God gave him and when he was done talking the people were watching I don't know why those days they didn't clap and cheer up like we are now I wonder how those guys preach you would say something powerful and yet everybody will be looking like you are lying and he turned right to that gentleman and the wife was standing there and he said how long has he been in this situation could not talk could not walk and he held him casually ah! your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me he laid his hands and in an instant not gradually in an instant that man's tongue was unloosed or unlocked and he, he lifted him and began to ask him questions and he told him to stand up. Someone sat on the wheelchair and the man started pushing the wheelchair. I said, oh God, help us, help us. What did we lose? What did we miss in this generation? Same power that conquered the grave lives in you, lives in you. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Our generation is at the mercy of the manifestation of the power of God from the saints to redeem this evil and depraved generation. This is not a generation of blind loyalty again. The generation of our, of our parents would believe even if they don't understand. But this generation is a generation of questions. If you say he lifts, prove it. If you say he changes lives, prove it. We are not going to just believe and say yes sir for nothing. ministry without the power of god is only an invitation into a life of frustration believe me when i tell you business without the power of god parenting without the power of god we live in a time where you will see a child five years old and then he begins to confess i killed my father i killed my uncle i killed my mother and you are wondering five years The darkness that is upon the earth today will require more than good speaking, good discussion. It will take a display of power, genuine power as of old. And it has nothing to do with being in ministry as you know. Power. Please hear me. I wrote here the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness is power dependent write it down please the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness is power dependent no matter how prepared you are to be a witness you can learn doctrine wonderful you can learn character wonderful but if the power component is not captured in your preparation believe me it will look like god did not send you i hope you know that moses already began to learn the wisdom of egypt 
according to Paul's teaching before he left to encounter the God of the Bible yet when he was returning God said no no I will not send you just like that take this rod is a rod wherewith you will wrote signs and wonders let me submit to you sincerely our generation needs a revival of genuine power our understanding of power for the average believer in this generation is falling down and standing up and while we do not downplay anything that is sponsored by the spirit there is a level of power we need to go back to study history how far did God use this man how far did God anoint them men who shook cities by such a display of power you know let me tell you the truth Today we pride in having revelation. You listen to those people, sometimes they had a simple childlike message. Repent, Jesus is Lord. Then they say, now sit down and watch. I'm done talking. I have told you to repent. You are justified to not understand it. But let me show you what he can do. When the blind see, when the deaf hear, when the dead are raised back to life, when lives change, that one is a manifestation of the power of God and this is one of the things that we are missing you would go to a crusade that is full of tens of thousands of people and preach and preach and make an altar call and only five people will come out is that a crusade you sang you acted drama there were all kinds of motivations you even shared water and shared all kinds of drinks to motivate the people and then you preach and out of tens of thousands of people go and read Acts chapter 2 the Bible says when the Holy Ghost fell 3,000 people in a moment 3,000 people one moment no clashing of cymbal no bass guitar no keyboard programming any atmosphere but when power came and power fell Peter said this is that this is that which was spoken by prophet Joel there's frustration in ministry today because the power component has not been incorporated there is frustration today in the presence of darkness because genuine power we have not paid the price and for those who have tasted a bit of it we have come around that peripheral level whereas there are deeper levels of power Yes, sir. The days of his power. If Jesus himself had to be declared as the Son of God with power, it means every believer in Christ, listen very carefully, every believer in Christ, it is your responsibility to work in partnership with the keys I'll be sharing with you. To make your calling and your election sure please let me speak to you respectfully if you're a man or a woman of God here people have a right to suspect you and think you are a burden to God's program until you validate your call among the many evidences by the display of the power of God to change to heal to deliver to set free by the time you come into a family ladies and gentlemen and within three days their lives change doors open the yokes of witchcraft broken because you came Elisha said oh king don't be afraid let no man come and let him know that there is a prophet in Israel holy holy Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I remember many years ago, just when we were at the infancy, just even preparing to start, this walk I remember one of the spectacular miracles that God did I had seen bits and pieces of the grace of God but that would be an event where God healed someone he was on phone 
I prayed for that gentleman. I don't know where he's probably he's somewhere around the world even listening today he had a, a medical condition where his spine the spine was broken they listed you know how they, they name all those things and it was broken and they were waiting for some people from India at the teaching hospital in Zaria and I prayed for this gentleman I remember he was even wearing a neck um, what do you call it a collar and I prayed honestly looking from this standpoint i don't know if i believed a miracle will happen or not but i remember praying and that gentleman removed everything and ran to his mother's room it was when night call just started and the only thing i know is that the mother shouted jesus and that was it let me tell you the next day in that family you know how people come for burial people came to verify is this thing true I myself, it was when I saw the gentleman who came with the x-ray. I remember when that thing happened, let me tell you, over the next maybe one month, I got calls from medical personnel, I got calls from several people. I have this disease, that means people have been hurting, but until they find where genuine power can work, they would rather just keep quiet with their pain. Oh, restore power, restore power, restore power to the body, restore power more than the speakings of men, more than the philosophies of men, more than falling down and standing up, more than just speaking philosophies, restore authentic apostolic power to your body. Let me tell you the truth. It is not difficult to take a nation. Believe me when I tell you, it is not difficult to take a territory. Territories were supposed to be taken to the degree to which they see the excellency of God's power. We have replaced power with good speaking and there is a place for it. But let me tell you, if we believe we are going to save this generation, just by the gist thing we are saying, we will be disappointed. I can tell you. Why will I not go to a harbor list when I try every option and every pastor prays for me and nothing happens and yet I am dying? Don't tell people don't go to a harbor list, don't go back to the village, don't go to, you don't know the desperation of people's pain. When you understand what people can do in the presence of pain, you will cry for power rather than condemn people until you give an alternative that is superior, an alternative that is provable. Forget about this cheese that you say, don't go to the devil. Hallelujah. That little incident would be the beginning of mighty things that God would do through my life, but it was a lesson. I remember the frustration that I felt as a young man of God just starting out. That I would, I remember one time I went to pray for someone and I spoke to that man, I laid my hands upon him. He was on a wheelchair. The wife absolutely believed in me. She beat you, you, you couldn't have said that they, it was unbelief. The woman believed in me with all her heart that if I stepped into their house, that man would stand up from the wheelchair. But I prayed for him sincerely. Let me tell you the truth by the privilege of God's grace. I don't claim to know so much, but I've read this Bible a bit. Believe me when I tell you. I quoted scriptures, I taught her doctrine. Then it was now time for performance. And I stood right there and said, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, Lord, by your mercy, this and that and that, absolutely nothing happened. You see, not many people will be honest to tell you this. Everybody will just talk all kinds of nonsense. 
I left that day and I said, God, this is not good. It's not good for me. It's not good for my mindset. It's not even good for my health. And it's not good for the people you are sending me to. Can I tell you, a time will come where people get used to you being powerless. It's a dangerous state as a man of God. When people conclude you, people have groups in their minds. They know those who are serious. They know those who are sincere but powerless. And they know those who are joking. When they really have problems, they know who to meet. In one day, nations can be saved if they can truly see the power of God, even by the Spirit of God. The Bible says Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. Please sit down. Thank God for the testimonies that we see and we celebrate. Thank God for the little that God does in and through our lives. But believers, let me submit to you. Look at me, please. How many of you will celebrate dew just falling during rainy season? As powerful as dew is, is it enough to cause your crops to grow? It takes, it takes rain. It says, as for rain in the time of the latter rain. We are celebrating trickles in the body of Christ. One headache here, one miracle happening there. That is the reason why they suspect all of us and think that we are all whatever it is. Because there is a level of consistency that mastery must bring. That people can come and know for a shorty. That in addition to hearing the counsel of God, they are going to see God in their lives overnight. Let me tell you the truth. It is not difficult to win souls. I tell you this, except and unless they see the display of the power and the glory of God. Men are not that stubborn. They just have not been transported to a realm higher than science. The replacement for power is philosophy and the explanations of men. And the excuse that men don't have faith. someone learning the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness of his resurrection is power dependent John 1 12 let's look at a few scriptures my God I pray that someone as you are listening to me tonight you will truly have an encounter with the power of God John 1 12 but as many as received him the Bible says to them he gave what did he give them hmm. so they've already received him the Bible says in addition he gave them power power to become power to become the breadwinner power to become the, the lifter who lifts others Power to veto the yokes and the curses. Power to declare longevity over your family. Power to lift people out of shame. Power to answer the question, where is your God? He says to them gave he power to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7 please. He said, where of Paul now? I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. I was made a minister. It took more than oil and earthly ordination to make me a minister. It took more than the laying on of hands of the presbytery. He says that grace was given to me and that came by the effectual working of his power in second timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 second timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 
the Bible talks about the possibility of having a form of godliness. Is that in your Bible? But denying the power thereof. Please look up. You can have the form of godliness. Oh yes, he heals. Oh yes, he lives. Amen. I know. Oh yes, I, I prophesy. And all these things we do. The Bible says, but denying the power. He said, turn away from such. Not just from such people. Turn away from such mindsets that makes you to embrace the form of godliness and then there is no power component to back it. So your being a witness in this kingdom is power dependent. Can I tell you sincerely, especially for those of us who are laborers in the vineyard, this work is going to become a burdensome a, a, a pattern, a repetitive cycle of burdensome pain that will evolve to jealousy and anger without the genuine manifestation of the power of God. I submit to you without sounding proud. Members are not going to leave their house and come and sit down quietly just to hear stories. They can listen online. Whatever makes them to get up and come and sit down, you better be sure that they will come and receive what will change their lives. It is going to take more than just listening. Some of you, while you are seated right now, your loved ones are in the hospital. Some of you, while you are seated right now, you can't even wait for miracle service because the urgency that is there, it may not, if they, it is a matter of life and death. Hey, hey. Unfortunately, respectfully but unfortunately, we have reduced the power of God to material prosperity in the body of Christ. So whether you have zero anointing or whatever, once you are rich, it is generally, it is safe to conclude that you have power. While it is true that there is a dimension of the power of God that brings kingdom wealth, can I tell you the truth? It will take more than money to move the purposes of God. You don't drop money on someone on a wheelchair and he stands up. No. If that were so, we'll stop preaching and all of us will go to look for money and just drop it on sick bodies. It takes more than a bottle of water. It takes more than a handkerchief, an apron, anointing oil. Power to change lives. That someone leaves his home, that mama can guarantee that as I'm bringing my son for koinonia, she doesn't need to tell him you will change. She can only pray that you will come with her. And the young man just sits down. And while praise and worship is happening, and the word is happening, the one stubborn child who vowed that he will not change, an altar call is made, and he's the first to run from outside. That is power. Power that translates a person from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. That is genuine power, ladies and gentlemen. someone who is the only one who has risen among 11 people in the family and he comes just for one encounter and within one week doors open and all six get jobs first then the remaining are, they just rise into superior dimensions the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection with great power not great speaking not great stories and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and he says and great grace was upon them all great power great power 
great power. He gave witness of the resurrection with great power. It takes great power. Some of us, while we are seated here, our loved ones have not been interested in the things of God for a long time because sincerely there is nothing about your faith experience that has become a sermon. They have looked at your life and there is no demonstration of the reality of the power of God. Tonight's meeting is to provoke you. The Bible says he gave us power. He gave us more than a message, ladies and gentlemen. There is a message to this thing, but there is the power of God. By the time someone comes with a genotype issue, blood condition, and you know, listen, I'm not talking about miracles that you are not sure, miracles that are doctored here and there, genuine miracles when the power of God touches a man, every scientific thing can confirm it, even if it cannot explain it. Hear me. It is not difficult for your father to be saved. The day the power of God is displayed in that family, go and read your Bible and see how people were converted in a moment. Did you not read about the jailer? The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. Is that true? And that everybody within the prison heard them. Suddenly there was a sound. It came and there was an earthquake and all doors opened. The jailer thinking they had gone. He took a knife and was about to kill himself. Say no, don't hurt yourself. We are all here. And that began the beginning of the salvation of his whole family. We lie today about testimonies because there is no genuine power to produce authentic miracles. We talk about people who are healed that we can never see. People who are doing all kinds of exaggerated miracles. Why can't it happen in the midst of God's people? Oh, my help has come. Oh. tell you the truth in my opinion there is nothing more demeaning to the message of the gospel and the power of God than telling people stories of what God did before and then there are people with that same situation right there and then at the end of it you share the grace and go what was the purpose of the story it's like I claim to be selling water and I tell you listen I gave people water, bags of water, bottles of water, and someone says, I am thirsty. Even if it's half a bottle, I will be grateful. And we say, don't worry, it's all right. I know that yesterday, I am telling you, go and ask them yesterday. Nobody is arguing. But you claim to have an endless supply of that water. Why will you not quench the thirst today? Thank God for the one who lifted yesterday. But we need to see the one who lives now. Thank God for the one who healed yesterday. But we need to see the one who heals now. Thank God for the one who saved yesterday. But for God's sake, we need to see the one who saves now. Someone shout now. now. One more time, say now. now. Thank God for the one who can change lives before. But we want to see the one who can change lives now. He said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Thank God for what he did, but now I'm in a place where I need to see your power. Hallelujah. Without power, a time will come when this generation will stand openly and reject Jesus generationally. I'm not talking about individuals, 
people will stand up you know the way there are movements movements a movement will stand up and say our goal is to officially announce that as a generation we have chosen to take Jesus out of our lives ah but not when we are alive and I will not be silent Restore power, restore healing power, restore power that sets men free. Oh, before Jesus returns, there will be a restoration. I am telling you, the fathers prophesied it. Smith Wigglesworth said it. A. A. Allen said it. These great men said it. There has to be a restoration of authentic, genuine spiritual power at a level and a frequency of mastery that can be a backing to the gospel. It was said that during the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was one of the cities with some of the healthiest people and manifestation of miracles because he had what we call healing rooms like dormitories and they would literally bring people there. He was accused of practicing medicine without license. Do you know the kind of audacity you would take to bring a sick body and keep that person there and you gave the person 30 days within 30 days regardless what was wrong we talk about the God that turned the sun backwards for Hezekiah we talk about the one who kept the sun still for Joshua you know we talk about that person as if he's a different God as if he went on a long vacation then they gave us another inferior one please hear me we want to see the nation saved in one day it would take more than good speaking some of them do not even understand English It will take more than that. Thank God for welfare. Thank God for charity. Pipe bone water, rice, sewing machine. Thank God for it. But if somebody is sick, he does not need a sewing machine. If there are demons that sit upon people's lives, please don't get me wrong. I don't downplay those things. Those things only give added value. When Jesus showed up, he didn't give physical gifts. He announced the kingdom with such a demonstration of power he healed the sick they brought him people in the night when it was evening he healed them casted all the demons ask and now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises your life. a demonstration of the power of God to a degree and a frequency that dumbfounds principalities and powers can I tell you the truth I know that many people downplay the place of the supernatural and the miraculous and then all these controversial miracles that are not spectacular enough oh headache was healed and someone is arguing with it and saying how are you sure it was a panadol you took in the morning or the prayer of the man of god because there is a realm of the miraculous called notable miracles 
miracles that consultants will say listen i have practiced medicine for 35 years i have not seen it in this fashion that a woman with no tubes whatsoever carrying triplets where did the baby stay that one there is a machine that can check it a man who comes to church on a wheelchair carries his wheelchair by himself back home remember that man has neighbors and they said as said this morning you were crippled and he said I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of God how many billboards can announce like that how many posters can announce like that that Jesus is alive please hear me the darkness that is in this world today I am saying it again it will require more than just nice preaching more than having just a sincere heart I'm saying this because I believe there are many people here you are part of this mighty army my precious people hear me if God told the apostles to tarry, you need to know why he gave them power. He said, you guys, he spent three and a half years. Who teaches doctrine more than Jesus? Who mentors a people more than the rabbi himself? And he said, I am confident of all I have given you, but I submit to you is not enough. Tarry. Why will you still tarry? Every day was a lecture with Jesus. You know what it means to sit down in his presence? full of the Holy Ghost receiving lectures for three and a half years I thought that would be enough for ministry he said tarry until you'll be endued with power we will keep giving flimsy explanations for the absence of power like it does not matter or it's not all about power of course it's not all about power but the role that power has to play nothing will replace it nothing will replace it do you know the confidence to do evangelism has died in many of you because there is no power to prove you don't know what you will go and tell the people that is the truth mama let's go to church and they'll say don't mind those those men of god who are fraudsters who will only come and collect money from you don't blame them until they see the display of God's power that someone walks in and while it is a I mean someone is coming on a crutch and the service has not even started and as soon as they come in look at the woman with the issue of blood the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment and said to herself if I may but touch I'm able to touch. The person talking to you has seen the grace of God to the glory of God. But believe me, it is it is child's play compared to where we are crying that God will help us get to. Because you see, I don't know. Now I'm not saying you should. I was I was looking for a particular video, and then I stumbled across some kind of program or something like that that you know was on YouTube and it was a two-minute video and I decided to watch it it was magicians magicians were doing something you know they were doing all kinds of things I don't know what they were doing but I kept looking with anger in my spirit not anger towards them anger towards our condition I said what in the world is this these people through whether through divination or astral practices have been able to access routes in the spirit and I say here we are shouting God is almighty shouting God is all-powerful do you know how many people who are following koinonia right now from various hospitals imagine you are a sick patient and you are listening to a man of God right now talking maybe you are listening on air what else will you be looking for what better platform for evangelism where you have unbelievers surrounding you is that not the greatest if you were God would that not be the greatest opportunity to get that person healed 
this thing is not working in our lives let's just be honest and submit with humility and start searching for the pathway that leads to authentic power rather than standing in pride and talking about our falling here and there that is not producing any potent result when i speak i speak with love and honor to the body but i submit to you we are joking we need to obtain grace from God. It's an uncomfortable truth. If we call one person who is blind now to come and stand here, one person who is on a wheelchair now to come and stand here, one person whose life and family is under yokes and curses, come and stand here, one person who has gone through all kinds of bodily deformities, come and stand here, another person come and stand here and we give you a bible as a man of god we say all right you claim that jesus is lord what else is a greater expression of darkness than this demonstrate the superiority of the life of god i like elijah prophets of baal let's meet at camel this thing we have to settle once and for all all these debates about the sovereignty of god no let's go to mount camel if god be god serve him if Baal be god serve him in one day a nation was brought to his knees by one man not one church not one nation one day one day and he said let's start with you call upon your god from morning till night oh Baal, hear us Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. And nothing happened. When it was the time of the evening sacrifice, he said, get out of the way now. Don't waste my time. That is mastery. That is not, you don't guess with that kind of risk. Listen, Elijah was teaching us, we all claim we're in the New Testament. And we say these guys are in the Old Testament. But see what they did in the Old Testament. We who are now fruits of the New Testament, let us demonstrate the superiority of what we stand on. The Bible says it was founded upon better promises. And please do not say the bodies of men do not matter. Because Jesus died in the flesh. The same grace that saves is the same grace that heals. The same grace that delivers. When he blesses, he blesses holistically. Spirit, soul and body. Tonight's teaching is a wake up call. It's a wake up call. And we called upon the God of heaven. The Bible says fire came. And licked the entire thing. Burnt everything and they killed the prophets of Baal. How about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? How long did it take Babylon to submit to the Lordship of Jehovah? One day, one spectacular encounter. A day will come we'll step our feet across nations and they reject the gospel and will tell them you rejected light and darkness will suddenly appear physical darkness as proof that they have rejected the gospel that is a sermon greater than any oratory and people will run and say come show us the way of the Lord if it is true that Jesus is coming soon I submit to you the rate at which we are winning the world the November statistics of the world says we are 8 billion people and counting Christianity practicing faith, including backsliders, including unserious people, all together professing Christians were about 2.6 billion. Out of how many? Over 2,000 years, this is what we have achieved. The Bible called a few people, these are they that turn the world upside down. There needs to be a spectacular manifestation of the hand of God. Go and read about the Azusa Street Revival. Go and read about the Wells Revival. Go and read about men like John Knox. Go and read about men like E.M. Bounds, Charles G. Finney. Go and read about these great men. Believe me, it was when you see these things written in history, they are not empty talks. They were written for our learning. Man of God, something is wrong with your spiritual life if this message is not challenging you.
a few of us that it looks like God has helped a bit. We are the ones that people have to make do it. Relative to what can be, what is there. There was a video I watched years ago about a river somewhere, please sit down. A river somewhere in the east that suddenly appeared also, I, I don't know if it's verified, but I mean it's, it's one time and it was purported that it had some healing power and it was recorded and people were jumping and diving into it even while they were recording them they were not ashamed because it seemed to carry a semblance there were thousands of people it looked like a market square a river that cannot speak a river that cannot preach a river that did not have a keyboardist a river that does not give honorarium or take honorarium it only there was a, 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 a statement that it could heal and people came from everywhere. Let me tell you the truth. Jesus would have been surprised if the only thing he brought is a salmon. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. Is that what your Bible says he did? No. He started, he announced himself with a spectacle demonstration of the miraculous then he now calmed the people down and said come to the mountain and then he now started teaching them they didn't exactly believe but could they argue he said even if you don't believe me believe me for the work's sake and then the ultimate of that power was when he died went to Hades collected the keys and on the third day he rose again nothing could bring him down and he resurrected by the power of the spirit and said all hail all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me he says go go have we truly been obedient let me tell you the truth evangelism is not something you just encourage people to do evangelism is a product of conviction when people see the authentic manifestation of power, how many of you right now, if we announce that in Koinonia, we are giving 50, 50,000 tomorrow, no announcement on social media, that's the condition. Don't announce anything on social media, but we are giving 50, 50,000 for instance tomorrow. You will see strategies of publicity you have never known the human brain can invent. That is because they, there is an assurance that 50,000 is on ground. A family of 10 can say, let's quickly come because that's 500 naira, that's rent. People would travel by 2 a.m. and come and wait patiently. Sun, too small a reason. Rain, too small a reason for 50,000. So when you tell people that Jesus is here, he saves, he heals, he delivers. They will first drag themselves and say let's let's watch and see what happens at the end of it you share the grace they say i knew it i knew that is this nonsense that will waste my time again the next time you invite them they will say pray for us it's already a message it's a it's a it's a shorthand form of a long writing that says you are wasting my time and i'm not prepared to go and waste my time in that place again I pray that God will do something to me, to you, to Koinonia, and to the body of Christ to restore genuine and authentic power. The world is not prepared for our excuses. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans chapter 8, I reckon that the sufferings of this time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It says, for the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God creation was subject to the bondage of corruption not willingly but by reason of Adam the one who subjected him that they are waiting to come into the glorious liberty of the sons this is the power of God let the blind see let the deaf hear let the crippled be healed let people with all kinds of demonic situations Imagine a family comes and you tell them in the name of Jesus, the gates of this family is open. And right as you are prophesying, somebody calls at home and says, I don't know, but someone just came and gave us two million. He said, God sent him. Where are you right now? You say, I'm in church. 
What is the man of God saying? He's just declaring. He said, you better stay there. No amount of billboard, poster, internet advert will replace the demonstration of the authentic power of Jesus Christ. Authentic power of Jesus Christ. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, tomorrow it happened. Little children, have you any catch? No. Cast your net to the right side. End of discussion. They caught so much fish. Do you know? I look at so many believers and I see the way I hate seeing people suffering. It is not just because it is my call. Every time I see this, I immediately take responsibility. Remember my vision that I shared with you? of years ago no food no water who is the cause that was a whole generation speaking sometimes i'm not an emotional person ordinarily honestly i've seen all kinds of things and sometimes i even ask myself whether i'm all right is it that you don't cry can't you i'm, I'm it doesn't mean i'm not touched but i can just stand like a stone there but let me tell you sincerely you want to see tears from my eyes let me see oppression and god's people being reduced to become like noah animals spiritually financially and in and otherwise that one has triggered compassion i can cry and weep like a baby do you know what it means to see a family of five people six people on their way to church no money no food but they love jesus and you say they don't have faith what is your definition of faith I want to prophesy and they kneel down with their hands open expecting to receive and at the end of it we share the grace one year becomes two years becomes five years and absolutely nothing happened what of family members who say apostle i hear you know people send me text messages and sometimes they say apostle i've heard the mighty things that god is doing with you if you can only speak the word i know my mother or my brother and sometimes I, I take that body and I say, Lord, these people believe in me and they believe in you. Help me to stop disappointing you. Let there be a higher level of power and a higher level of grace. The day you meet your father, they've been laughing at you and say, you are a, I hear that you are going to be a man of God. Say, my friend, go and look for a job. Wait, go and buy federal government form and look for a job ministry that is full of failures and you look at your father and say daddy you have been on this bed for five years i come in the name of the lord i am your son but i come by the authority of the one who has sent me stand up and your father stands up and begins to walk around the compound what happened jesus healed what happened jesus delivered what happened jesus saved It's a different thing to say, ah, God healed somebody somewhere and the person says, I am healed. People will easily be able to doubt. This is a generation that wants to see the power of God. Not just hear. You can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. Is God speaking to someone tonight? In one minute before I continue, I want you to lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, I am available. Trust me with higher levels of your power. Trust me with higher levels of your grace. Someone is praying. You are crying to the God of heaven. Higher levels of your power. Higher levels of your grace. There needs to be results. Results, results, results in my life results in my Christian experience. Results. Demonstrations that Jesus is alive, winning nations in a moment by the power of his word, backed up by authentic Genuine, superior spiritual power.
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I've read a few books about the saints past and mighty men and women of God. And I have seen God move through their lives in very mighty and spectacular ways. Not just in the area of healing, but bringing genuine breakthrough, genuine transformation whole families translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his son let me tell you the truth i have seen whole families saved non-christian families beginning from maybe someone in the family and then father mother sisters brothers we are not speaking from a standpoint of weakness we are speaking from a standpoint of higher levels of hunger for more that yesterday's anointing cannot suffice for today's challenges there needs to be a higher level and a higher dimension of God's grace there are nations today that were revival hubs but today they have become a historic monument sites where people go there to just feel bad and say God you once moved here there are nations and continents that if you wanted to see what God was doing, you would have to travel to those regions. Today, when you go there, all you see are grave sites, monuments that once upon a time, God moved. By this teaching, the Spirit of God is hovering around the earth again one last time saying anyone who is available anyone doesn't matter what family you are coming from anyone who is available does not matter who knows you or who does not know you whether you are male or female anyone preacher i know you don't speak well but anyone anyone who thirst he says in the third day that great day of the feast he said anyone who thirst come let him come it's an invitation blessed be the man that god causes to approach him come For someone God is calling you you came to church tonight and God is saying I'm extending an invitation the dreams that you saw does not have to end as dreams Apostle I saw Smith Wigglesworth that's not enough telling the world you saw him is not what they want when Elisha carried the mantle of Elijah the sons of the prophet said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha saving nations in one day bringing territories to the obedience of Christ in one day in one moment in one encounter we don't have the time to go city by city again the time is near we don't have the time to go conference by conference again taking regions and taking nations by the power and the fire of Jesus hallelujah please write if you can let me share with you three platforms for accessing superior levels of the power of God and then we'll pray Someone God brought you to church to plant a fire that will not die soon. Mm. This fire that is coming upon you is not planning to leave you soon. It will burn everything until you become an inferno of fire. There are men and women that will rise up in this end time. From a standpoint of power, you will not even know who is male and female again. There will be people carrying authentic power. Authentic power. Authentic power. Authentic power. Who fade away this this era of faking miracles this era of stage managing all kinds of things and introduce something authentic to the
the world again. More than good speaking, more than oratory, more than intellectualism and philosophy. Oh, let the power of God come again. Come upon this generation. Maranatha, let your power come. Come upon our homes. Come upon our families. Come upon our pulpits. Come upon our churches. Maranatha, come, come, O oh God, come, O oh God, let your name not be to a reproach, come, O oh God, visit families again, come, O oh God, visit Africa again, come, O oh God. Visit Nigeria again. Come, oh God. Visit the West again. Visit the East again. Visit the South South again. Visit the North again. Pray one minute and say, Lord, visit again. Visit again. Visit again. Don't tell me Apostle Babalola's story. He has gone. Visit us again. Don't tell me about Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He has joined the cloud of witnesses. Visit again, oh God. Don't tell me about Catherine Kuhlman. Don't tell me about Emmy Temple McPherson. Visit again, oh God. Let history be rewritten. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Revive us again. Shabakatakatoskatea. Visit again. Visit again. In your power. Visit again. In the name of Jesus. It is, it is child's play compared to where we are crying that God will help us get to. Because you see, I don't know, now I'm not saying you should, I was, I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across some kind of program or something like that that, you know, was on YouTube and it was a two minute video and I decided to watch it. It was magicians. Magicians were doing something, you know, they were doing all kinds of things. I don't know what they were doing, but I kept looking with anger in my spirit, not anger towards them, anger towards our condition. I said, what in the world is this? These people through, whether through divination or astral practices have been able to access routes in the spirit. And I say, here we are shouting God is almighty, shouting God is all powerful. Do you know how many people who are following koinonia right now from various hospitals imagine you are a sick patient and you are listening to a man of god right now talking maybe you are listening on air what else will you be looking for what better platform for evangelism where you have unbelievers surrounding you is that not the greatest if you were god would that not be the greatest opportunity to get that person healed this thing is not working in our lives. Let's just be honest and submit with humility and start searching for the pathway that leads to authentic power rather than standing in pride and talking about our falling here and there that is not producing any potent result. When I speak, I speak with love and honor to the body, but I submit to you, we are joking. We need to obtain grace from God. It's an uncomfortable truth. If we call one person who is blind now to come and stand here, one person who is on a wheelchair now to come and stand here, one person whose life and family is under yokes and curses, come and stand here, one person who has gone through all kinds of bodily deformities, come and stand here. 
another person come and stand here and we give you a Bible as a man of God we say alright you claim that Jesus is Lord what else is a greater expression of darkness than this demonstrate the superiority of the life of God I like Elijah prophets of Baal let's meet at Camel this thing we have to settle once and for all all these debates about the sovereignty of God no let's go to Mount Camel if God be God serve him if Baal be God serve him in one day a nation was brought to his knees by one man not one church not one nation one day one day and he said let's start with you call upon your God from morning till night oh bell hear us oh bell hear us oh bell hear us and nothing happened when it was the time of the evening sacrifice he said get out of the way now don't waste my time that is mastery that is not you don't guess with that kind of risk Listen, Elijah was teaching us, we all claim we're in the New Testament. And we say these guys are in the Old Testament. But see what they did in the Old Testament. We who are now fruits of the New Testament, let us demonstrate the superiority of what we stand on. The Bible says it was founded upon better promises. And please do not say the bodies of men do not matter. Because Jesus died in the flesh. The same grace that saves is the same grace that heals. The same grace that delivers. When he blesses, he blesses holistically. Spirit, soul and body. Tonight's teaching is a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. And we called upon the God of heaven. The Bible says fire came and licked the entire thing. Burned everything and they killed the prophets of Baal. How about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? How long did it take Babylon to submit to the Lordship of Jehovah? One day, one spectacular encounter. A day will come, we'll step our feet across nations, and they reject the gospel and we'll tell them you rejected light, and darkness will suddenly appear physical darkness as proof that they have rejected the gospel that is a sermon greater than any oratory and people will run and say come show us the way of the Lord if it is true that Jesus is coming soon I submit to you the rate at which we are winning the world the November statistics of the world says we are 8 billion people and counting Christianity practicing faith including backsliders including unserious people all together professing Christians were about 2.6 billion out of how many over 2,000 years this is what we have achieved the Bible called a few people these are they that turned the world upside down there needs to be a spectacular manifestation of the hand of God Go and read about the Azusa Street Revival. Go and read about the Wealth Revival. Go and read about men like John Knox. Go and read about men like E.M. Bounds, Charles G. Feeney. Go and read about these great men. Believe me, it was when you see these things written in history, they are not empty talks. They were written for our learning. Man of God, something is wrong with your spiritual life if this message is not challenging you. A few of us that it looks like God has helped a bit. We are the ones that people have to make do it. Relative to what can be, what is there. There was a video I watched years ago. About a river somewhere. Please sit down. A river somewhere in the east. That suddenly appeared also. I, I don't know if it's verified. But I mean it's, it's one time. And it was purported that it had some healing power. And it was recorded and people were jumping and diving into it. Even while they were recording them, they were not ashamed. Because it seemed to carry a semblance. There were thousands of people. It looked like a market square. A river that cannot speak. A river that cannot preach. A river that did not have a keyboardist. A river that does not give honorarium or take honorarium. It only 
there was a, 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 a statement that it could heal and people came from everywhere let me tell you the truth Jesus would have been surprised if the only thing he brought is a salmon repent for the kingdom is at hand is that what your Bible says he did no he started he announced himself with a spectacular demonstration of the miraculous then he now calmed the people down and said come to the mountain and then he now started teaching them they didn't exactly believe but could they argue he said even if you don't believe me believe me for the work's sake and then the ultimate of that power was when he died went to Hades collected the keys and on the third day he rose again nothing could bring him down and he resurrected by the power of the spirit and said all hail all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me he says go go have we truly been obedient let me tell you the truth evangelism is not something you just encourage people to do evangelism is a product of conviction when people see the authentic manifestation of power how many of you right now if we announce that in koinonia we are giving 50 50 000 tomorrow no announcement on social media that's the condition don't announce anything on social media but we are giving 50 50 000 for instance tomorrow you will see strategies of publicity you have never known the human brain can invent that is because they, there is an assurance that 50,000 is on ground. A family of 10 can say, let's quickly come because that's 500 naira, that's rent. People would travel by 2 a.m. and come and wait patiently. Sun, too small a reason. Rain, too small a reason for 50,000. So when you tell people that Jesus is here, he saves, he heals, he delivers. They will first drag themselves and say let's let's watch and see what happens at the end of it you share the grace they say i knew it i knew that is this nonsense that will waste my time again the next time you invite them they will say pray for us it's already a message it's a it's a it's a shorthand form of a long writing that says you are wasting my time and i'm not prepared to go and waste my time in that place again I pray that God will do something to me, to you, to Koinonia, and to the body of Christ to restore genuine and authentic power. The world is not prepared for our excuses. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans chapter 8, I reckon that the sufferings of this time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God creation was subject to the bondage of corruption not willingly but by reason of adam the one who subjected him that they are waiting to come into the glorious liberty of the sons this is the power of god let the blind see let the deaf hear let the crippled be healed let people with all kinds of demonic situations imagine a family comes and you tell them in the name of jesus the gates of this family is open and right as you are prophesying somebody calls at home and says i don't know but someone just came and gave us two million he said god sent him where are you right now you say i'm in church what is the man of god saying he's just declaring he said you better stay there no amount of billboard poster internet advert will replace the demonstration of the authentic power of jesus christ authentic power of jesus christ the prophet said by this time tomorrow tomorrow it happened little children have you any catch no cast your net to the right side end of discussion they caught so much fish Do you know, I look at so many believers and I see the way I hate seeing people suffering. It is not just because it is my call. Every time I see this, 
I immediately take responsibility. Remember my vision that I shared with you of years ago? No food, no water. Who is the cause? That was a whole generation speaking. Sometimes I'm not an emotional person ordinarily, honestly. I've seen all kinds of things and sometimes I even ask myself whether I'm all right. Is it that you don't cry? Can't you? I'm, I'm, it doesn't mean I'm not touched, but I can just stand like a stone there. But let me tell you sincerely, you want to see tears from my eyes? Let me see oppression and God's people being reduced to become like Noah animals, spiritually, financially, and, in, and otherwise. That one has triggered compassion. I can cry and weep like a baby. Do you know what it means to see a family of five people, six people, on their way to church? No money, no food, but they love Jesus. And you say they don't have faith? What is your definition of faith? I want to prophesy and they kneel down with their hands open, expecting to receive. And at the end of it, we share the grace. One year becomes two years, becomes five years, and absolutely nothing happened. What of family members who say apostle? I hear, you know, people send me text messages and sometimes they say apostle. I've heard the mighty things that God is doing with you. If you can only speak the word. I know my mother or my brother. And sometimes I, I take that word and I say, Lord, these people believe in me. And they believe in you. Help me to stop disappointing you. Let there be a higher level of power and a higher level of grace. The day you meet your father, they've been laughing at you and say, you are a, I hear that you are going to be a man of God. Say, my friend, go and look for a job. Wait, go and buy federal government form and look for a job. Ministry that is full of failures. And you look at your father and say, Daddy, you have been on this bed for five years. I come in the name of the Lord. I am your son. But I come by the authority of the one who has sent me. Stand up. And your father stands up and begins to walk around the compound. What happened? Jesus healed. What happened? Jesus delivered. What happened? Jesus saved. It's a different thing to say, ah, God healed somebody somewhere. And the person says, I am healed. People will easily be able to doubt. This is a generation that wants to see the power of God. Not just here. You can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. Is God speaking to someone tonight? In one minute before I continue, I want you to lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, I am available. Trust me with higher levels of your power. Trust me with higher levels of your grace. Someone is praying. You are crying to the God of heaven. Higher levels of your power. Higher levels of your grace. There needs to be results, 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 results in my life, results in my Christian experience. Results. demonstrations that Jesus is alive winning nations in a moment by the power of his word backed up by authentic genuine superior spiritual power in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I've read a few books about the saints past and mighty men and women of God. And I have seen God move through their lives in very mighty and spectacular ways. Not just in the area of healing, but bringing genuine breakthrough, genuine transformation whole families translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his son 
let me tell you the truth i have seen whole families saved non-christian families beginning from maybe someone in the family and then father mother sisters brothers we are not speaking from a standpoint of weakness we are speaking from a standpoint of higher levels of hunger for more that yesterday's anointing cannot suffice for today's challenges there needs to be a higher level and a higher dimension of God's grace there are nations today that were revival hubs but today they have become a historic monument sites where people go there to just feel bad and say God you once moved here there are nations and continents that if you wanted to see what God was doing you would have to travel to those regions today when you go there all you see are grave sites monuments that once upon a time God moved by this teaching the Spirit of God is hovering around the earth again one last time saying anyone who is available anyone doesn't matter what family you are coming from anyone who is available does not matter who knows you or who does not know you whether you are male or female anyone preacher i know you don't speak well but anyone anyone who thirst he says in the third day that great day of the feast he said anyone who thirst come let him come it's an invitation blessed be the man that god causes to approach him come for someone god is calling you you came to church tonight and god is saying i'm extending an invitation the dreams that you saw does not have to end as dreams apostle i saw smith wigglesworth that's not enough telling the world you saw him is not what they want when elijah carried the mantle of elijah the sons of the prophet said the spirit of elijah doth rest upon elijah saving nations in one day bringing territories to the obedience of Christ in one day in one moment in one encounter we don't have the time to go city by city again the time is near we don't have the time to go conference by conference again taking regions and taking nations by the power and the fire of Jesus hallelujah please write if you can let me share with you three platforms for accessing superior levels of the power of God and then we'll pray someone God brought you to church to plant a fire that will not die soon mm. this fire that is coming upon you is not planning to leave you soon it will burn everything until you become an inferno of fire there are men and women that will rise up in this end time from a standpoint of power you will not even know who is male and female again there will be people carrying authentic power authentic power authentic power authentic power will fade away this this era of faking miracles this era of stage managing all kinds of things and introduce something authentic to the world again more than good speaking more than oratory more than intellectualism and philosophy oh let the power of God come again come upon this generation Maranatha let your power come come upon our homes come upon our families come upon our pulpits come upon our churches Kare skaliya, lage deke 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 pa. 
Maranatha, come. Come, O oh God. Come, O oh God. Let your name not be to a reproach. Come, O oh God. Visit families again. Come, O oh God. Visit Africa again. Come, O oh God. Visit Nigeria again. Come, O oh God. Visit the West again. Visit the East again. Visit the South South again. Visit the North again. Pray one minute and say, Lord, visit again. Visit again. Visit again. Don't tell me Apostle Babalola's story. He has gone. Visit us again. Don't tell me about Archbishop Benson Itahosa. He has joined the cloud of witnesses. Visit again, oh God. Don't tell me about Catherine Kuhlman. Don't tell me about Emmy Temple McPherson. Visit again, oh God. Let history be rewritten. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Revive us again. Shabakatakatoskatea. Visit again. Visit again in your power. Visit again. We believe you are blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.